Hi everybody, this is Kefren, your favorite French Canadian. Today I'm gonna show you how to boost your FPS in the new Call of Duty Warzone 2. We're gonna start by optimizing Windows, and after that, we will go inside of the game. A lot of different parameters over there, a lot of options with image scaling also. So let's start this. So now the best setting for Windows for gaming. So first of all, we're gonna search for game mode in the search bar. Make sure that game mode is activated for the past like year. It's pretty good. Uh, you're getting a, a decent performance and you're going to make sure that all your resources are focused on the game that you're playing. For the Xbox game bar, I still recommend to deactivate this one causing stuttering, crashing in some games. So I'm not a huge fan of the Xbox game bar. And for the capture, make sure that the background recording is at off and also the, record, uh, the recorded audio is at off. Another thing that I recommend, it's the hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. Make sure that you're searching for graphic setting. You will need an NVIDIA card, 1000 series or more recent. It will really help with bottleneck. So if you have a 1050, 1050 Ti, 1060, even the 2060, you can expect a nice 2 to 5% boost. And also you can expect like less stuttering when you're using that. So I re really recommend to use that. Another thing that is really important, it's your driver. Make sure that you have the latest driver from AMD, NVIDIA, even Intel, if you have an iGPU on your processor. Um, so for an example here with AMD, you just click check for update and it's gonna show you if you have the latest one. You can do the same thing with NVIDIA. Another thing that I can recommend with the um, NVIDIA and AMD, they have uh, an image scaling uh, for the past like a couple of months. Um, for from AMD, it's called Super Resolution, and for Nvidia, it's NIS. I have dedicated video to, who's gonna like show you how to use that and how to configure it. But to explain you quickly what it's about, uh, so you need to enable this. So for example, I'm playing uh, in 2K because my monitor in, is in 2K. I'm going inside of my game. I lower the resolution at 1080p, and the software will scale it back at 2K. And with this process, I can save like 15, 20% in my FPS. Also, you can do it if you have like a 4K monitor and you want to do 1080p or 2K. Uh, you can expect a nice boost. The image quality will not be the same if you compare with native, but in some game, it's working very well and you it's very tough to see the difference. So I, I recommend to, to use it if you're struggling with your FPS. Another thing that I recommend, it's your energy profile. So write energy in your search bar, go to power option. Make sure that you're running something like balance or high performance. Um, on a de desktop computer, it should not be an issue. But if you're playing on a laptop, really make sure that you're using that or a special profile for performance uh, from your brand like Asus, Dell or whatever. The thing is, sometimes when you plug your uh, PC in the wall, unplug using it with the battery, sometimes it stay at power saver and you don't want to use that when you're playing a game. So super important to be plugged in and also uh, to use a proper uh, performance profile. Another thing that I can recommend, it's the Intelligent Standby List Cleaner. This is a software made by the guy from DDU. Um, it's it's pretty amazing, honestly. Um, it will help if you don't have a lot of RAM in your PC. So if you have four gig of RAM, eight gig, 12 gig, uh, after that, you should be fine. Windows is doing the job properly. So it will free memory and it's gonna make sure that it optimize your standby list. So what I recommend normally, it's look at your total memory here. In my case, it's 32, just divided by two. So for me, it's 16. Just press start and it will run automatically and you just lower the software like that and you're going to make sure it's optimized. So it's a really good software and also it helps a little bit with uh, stuttering. So I really recommend to use that. One last thing is um, I have dedicated video on my channel about overclocking CPU, overclocking GPU, depending on your brand and stuff. And it's pretty good because it there are basic overclocking guide. I don't touch voltage, so it's pretty safe. You can expect sometimes 2%, 10% boost in your FPS, depending on your thermal, depending on your component. But it's it's something that you need to look at too if you want to optimize your PC um, for the best performance. So now let's go inside of the game. So now, inside of the game, first of all, display mode, super important to go exclusive, full screen. I had a couple of issues with the borderless, borderless ones, some stuttering and issues like that. So super important to go with full screen. Uh, for the display monitor, make sure that you have the proper one. Display adapter, I know a lot of people are playing on a laptop, so make sure that you have your 
GPU and not your integrate GPU if you have both on your computer. I know some people have issue with that. So you sh if you have like an NVIDIA, I don't know, GTX 1050, you should see 1050 over there, not an Intel uh, integrate GPU. Refresh rate, make sure that you're using the proper amount of refresh rate uh, depending on your uh, monitor. So if you have like a 170 monitor, make sure that you have the the, uh, the proper one. Uh, by default, it was at 60 for me, so it was kind of an issue. So super important to look at this. Display resolution, I really recommend to go native. So if you have a 2K monitor, go 2K. If you have a 1080p monitor, go with 1080p. Dynamic resolution, don't use that. Put this one at off. You don't want any dynamic resolution. You need visibility when you're playing this game. So it's preferred to just optimize, optimize other stuff. For the VSync, I don't recommend to use them. Uh, you want uh, the lowest input lag possible. So no VSync. You can definitely use FreeSync or G-Sync if you have those technologies on your monitor to make sure that you don't have tiering issues. For custom, uh, custom frame rate, again, it really depends. If you don't care about thermals, just unlock it. You need like more FPS equal less uh, input lag. But uh, if you have a free sync or G sync monitor, you will need to stay in your range. So, for example, if you have a free sync 170 hertz monitor, you need to make sure that your FPS is lower than 170. Always like prefer to put two FPS less than the maximum of my refresh rate. So, in my case, it's 168. So let's go down a little bit. Focus mode, make sure it's at off. Don't use HDR. Even if you have an HDR screen, honestly, you're playing Warzone. You want to try hard. You don't want any effect. You want visibility. So put this one at off. For quality, I recommend to render resolution at 100. Not a huge fan of lowering it. If you don't have any upscaling technology and you have a very old computer, you can definitely go at something like 90, but honestly, uh, your image will look blurry, you will have pixels, so it's not very good for uh, visibility. For upscaling, if you need more FPS, first of all, I, wanna, I want to be clear with this. If you don't have any issue with FPS, don't use upscaling. It's better to just not using anything, it will be more clear. But the first one that you should use if you're struggling with your FPS, it's the DLSS. Though if you have this technology because you have an RTX card, definitely use it. If you don't have this technology, maybe test. Uh, it's a question of like, it really depends. I'm not a huge fan of FSR 1.0. I really hope they're going to update it for 2.0 or 2.1. So right now, Test like FSR or even the image scaling from NVIDIA if you have it. Uh, but DLSS is really the way to go if you want to use that. If you feel that your image is blurry and you don't want to use any upscaling technology, you can definitely use the Fidelity uh, SAS. It's for uh, the sharpening. It will help a lot for your visibility if you have a sharpening issue in your game. For anti-aliasing, I recommend to go with minimum over there. Don't use the Filmic 1. And anti-aliasing quality, go with low. You can expect a nice 8% boost in your FPS. And also, honestly, the anti-aliasing in this game is pretty trash. Uh, everything looks blurry, so that's why you should definitely remove it. For the video memory scale, I recommend to go with 85. Texture resolution and texture anisotropic really depend on the amount of VRAM that you have. Uh, because you're locking your VRAM at 85%, it really depends. If you just have 3 gig of VRAM, you will need to go to lower even very low. So it's really a question of uh, preference. Just lock your uh, VRAM at 85% because you want to have a 15% uh, empty for Windows and other background stuff on your computer. Nerby level of detail and distance level of detail go with low with those. You can expect a nice 6% boost in your FPS. Clutter draw distance go with short. Particle quality go low and very low. Uh, it will very help a lot when you have like explosion and when you will see particle. If you're getting some random drop, it's probably because of your particle quality. Make sure those, those one is at low. Bullet impact. I'm a fan of it. You want to see where you're shooting, you know. Uh, so super important to uh, put this one at on. And it's not a huge impact on your FPS, honestly. And it's better for your gameplay. Shader quality. A lot of people can run high. Uh, it's... It really depends on like what type of card that you're using. If you're really using a very old card, I don't know, an old Radian R9 uh, 280X, go something with medium. But for the majority of the people, shader quality, you can go at high. Tessellation, 
not a huge impact on your FPS, but if you have like a very a, a very old Radiant car, again, an R9 280X, they add like some struggle with tessellation, so just putting that off. But for the majority of the people, near is good. Terran Mirari, I recommend Max. I recommend also to use the on-demand texture streaming. Streaming quality, I recommend to go with normal. Volumetric quality, this one, a huge impact on your FPS. If you go high to low, you can expect a nice 9% boost in your FPS. I recommend also to uh, put your different physical quality at off and water caustic at off. Shadow and lighting, those ones are very important. First of all, shadow map go with low. You can expect a nice 22% boost if you compare with extreme. Shadows are taking a lot of resources in this game and in wars only, it's even worse. Screen space reflection, I recommend to put this one at off. Spot shadow quality, go with low. Spot cache, I recommend something like medium or, or high. Honestly, it really depends on your VRAM, the amount of VRAM. So if you have a lot of VRAM available, just go a little bit higher. Uh, but the thing here with shadow, you want to lower all the options because you want visibility and you want FPS and shadow will provide you this. Particle lighting, it's a bit like the uh, other particle uh, setup that we saw, parameter. Super important to go with low. And ambient occlusion, I recommend to put this one at off. Your game will look flat, but visibility will be a lot better and a lot more also FPS. Screen space reflection, I recommend to go with off. This one is a bit weird on my laptop with my 1050. If I compare high to off, I'm getting a nice 5% boost in my FPS. But on the 490, not a huge difference. Static reflection quality, I recommend low. And weather grid volume off. For post-processing post -processing effects, sorry, I recommend to use the uh, NVIDIA Reflex if you have this technology. Not, I'm not recommending boost right now. I had a lot of issue uh, on my 2070 and my 4090. So right now, go with on. Maybe test boost, but if you have some weird uh, stuttering stuff, probably it's because of this. And uh, for the rest of it, you want pure visibility. So depth of field, all those motion blur at off, and you don't want any film grain. For the view, field of view is super important to know. If you uh, put your maximum field of view, you will have less FPS. I know a lot of people don't understand that, but you see more in front of you, you need to render more. So if you are, you're playing with a very old computer or a, a bad GPU, start with 80, look at your FPS. If it's decent, go with 90. If it's still decent, go with 100 and just do some testing like this. Feel of you, you should definitely touch it at the end of this, uh, the old process, just to make sure that you're not struggling with your FPS. So this is pretty much it, guys. If you have any question about uh, Call of Duty Warzone 2 and the best settings, just come in, in the YouTube section, post me a clear question, uh, CPU, GPU, and RAM. I will try to help you the best that I can. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Peace.